this is Atlas, a rival 34, 1979, and our home. She was designed by Peter Brett. She is a thin keel, encapsulated. She draws 1.4 meters and has a skeg rudder. She is a masthead sloop rig. She weighs 5.4 tons and has a 3 meter beam. We have spent a lot of time and money refurbishing her to the way she looks now. So this is the foredeck of Atlas. Um, we have the front there, nice bow roller. So the chain goes over the bow roller. We have a nice chunky Samson post, two big cleats. We use this for the snubber wraps around here and the chain. Uh, we have a Furlex 204S roller furling for the Genoa, absolutely fantastic. This was with the boat when we bought her. Really, really nice bit of kit, never goes wrong. We have a, a Lumar Pro 1000 series anchor windlass, which we fitted ourselves. Yeah, a bit dirty at the moment. A bit salty, but... Uh, 700 watts. 700 watts. Really nice piece of kit, that. This is where the anchor no, lives. There's no anchor in there. There's no anchor in there <laughs> because it's on the seabed. Yeah. Um, yeah, the anchor lives inside here. I think the anchor is original with the boat. It's a Plow CQR 25 pound anchor. And it, it lives in there, which is a really, really nice feature, I think. These are two <coughs> uh, poles. We got a very large spinnaker pole. This thing here. We don't use that often because it's it's quite heavy and it's, very heavy, it's yeah. big, isn't it? Yeah. And we have uh, a whisker pole or jib pole, whatever you want to call it, a smaller one here. We use, we use this a lot. To, uh, yeah, to, mainly to go downwind for our Genoa. Really, mainly, yeah, I've gone downwind with our Genoa. We've got a forward, a f we've got a hatch here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got little wood bits here to yeah, it goes let air up go like in. that. Nice hatch. The decks on the rivals are really wide. You've got a lovely walkway all the way down on both sides with some nice teak handrails. This is our rig. She's a single spreader rig. Sloop rig. Sloop rig. We got a Raymarine radar up there, which is we haven't used it that much. No, but it does work. It does work. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's really good. We've got like two uh, vents here, which can be twisted around. Yeah, it's uh, like ventilation into the boat. Yeah, we name them, keep them that way, so when any waves come into the boat, it doesn't go inside. Mm -hmm. Got a lovely skylight here that opens up. Yep. Uh, we've got a tender, and we got grab rails on the side, which were varnished, but now they're just oiled, aren't they? Yeah, it's better for maintenance. On the mast, we've got three winches. We've got a winch here, which we use for controlling the um, the reefing. the reefing, yeah. the winch there which we use for the halyard, no, no, spare winch there, and a winch here we use for the halyard. They're pretty old winches, but they're they're pretty pretty good. We put a new mainsail cover on here. We made this ourselves. The other one wasn't big enough. Yeah. We've got a lovely spray hood, which we had made. Cost too much money to mention. <laughs> yeah, it did, didn't it? We got a um, boarding ladder here for going swimming, but it's the water's too cold in Scotland. Yeah, it's too cold in Scotland. Uh, this is our cockpit. We've got um, this is not real wood. It's uh, like synthetic uh, teak wood, isn't synthetic it? Teak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got two rope pockets here. One there and one on the other side to store ropes in. We've got on the control system on the left hand or the port side, we've got a um, good old fashioned compass. And on the starboard side, we've got a Raymarine uh, T60 system. 
and you've got your wind speed true and apparent wind you've got your speed over ground or the speed through water you've got your meters and then you got your auto helm on our starboard side we got a lumwa two-speed winch with um self-tailing uh, it's very handy really nice to have on our port side we got the an identical another two-speed luma winch uh, roller fern again which is brilliant then coming to this one this is a single speed winch it's quite quite a bit smaller as you can see from the other one and uh, we use this for our roller fern in just to uh fur up the the um the genoa basically uh, coming to our water, we fill up our water here, normally with a funnel because we're always on anchor. It feeds into a 120 litre water tank, which is a flexible water tank and it's underneath the, the saloon flooring. And then finally, coming to here, this is where we fill up our diesel basically, and it goes into our tank. I'm not sure what the tank is, I think it's about 100 litres or odd. For our sails, we have uh, a main sail which is about three years old. It's a uh, slabbed reef main with three reefing points on there. And the Genoa is about three years old as well. It's 130% Genoa. So it, it comes right out down by here. So yeah, the Genoa is the main power house sail for this boat. This is the galley on our rival 34 Atlas. We have uh, a Flavel B700C oven. Uh, it's probably original with the boat, I'm not sure. It's got a grill oven. It's gimbaled. And it's gimbaled. And two hobs there. Uh, stainless steel sink. Under the sink is it's where everyone keeps their everything anyway. Just cleaning products and things under the sink there. Uh, up here, it's just loads of storage, storage of cups. Things, tea towels, food, uh, plates and things. Uh, has your tea and coffee and so on and so on. And yeah, just more food and storage in here. Uh, this is where we keep all our pots and pans. It's a bit annoying because it goes all the way far back and it's dark in there. So you're always fiddling around trying to get pans. We're going to put a light up, up here, we think. Uh, another storage thing here, it's full of condiments, all your bits and pieces, salt and vinegar, ketchup, etc. We have more storage here and here. These are like cool boxes. Uh, yeah, it's basically loads and loads of cheese because we're addicted to cheese. Those are things in there. And more uh, cool boxes in here. There's no fridge or freezer on board, but it does stay pretty cool in there really handy and really deep all this wood here was all pretty old and damaged what I did is I sanded it all down and hard waxed oil everything in here it took about 200 hours of sanding uh, so yeah this is the sink area this is the pump, foot pump fresh water. fresh water foot pump and you pump this to let the water out of the sink. Uh, this is my bed, basically. Um, Adam calls it the coffin, but I love it because you can brace in there and it's lovely. Uh, we've got a chart, chart table here, which is a lovely piece of wood. Um, under here, uh, we've got the Neptune wind vane um, airfoil and charts and bit rope little tiny bits of rope pens and stuff and bits and pieces we use this is our ray marine um chart plotter c80 it very rarely gets used because we use navionics and we find it uses a lot of amps um, when it's running so we very rarely rarely use it but it's good to have a spare uh, coming across to our electronics from the bottom up We've got a VHF uh, marine radio. We've got all our fuses here. We've got the solar socket, which provi provi uh, gets power to this um, cigarette socket, so we can have, use USBs and stuff. That socket went for there. That's the VHF, the auto helm, the plotter, which is uh, this thing. And then the C Talk. It lets the plotter and uh, the auto helm um, speak to each other, so you can set courses, and the boat will steer to that certain course. So it's quite handy. Um, we've got a power management thing here. 
Um, on number four, it gives how many amps we've got coming in through the solar panel. So we've got four amps coming in at the moment. Um, it's probably getting knocked down anyway. Uh, number one, um, that'll give how many amps we've got coming in from the alternator on the engine. Going over to here to the Sunsaver 10. This is a 10 amp um, Sunsaver. It monitors and uh, regulates the solar charge, the power's coming in. When I said it was get probably gets knocked down, this regulates so it doesn't overcharge the batteries. Here we've got easy na nav text for offshore sailing. Um, it can pick up um, like text message weather up to 300 nautical miles offshore. So yeah, we haven't really used that this year yet. We only installed, installed it last year. Coming across again, it, we got our Buka control panel which are amp oil and temp lights and then coming across to here we got all our lights like nav lights mass lights streaming lights, anchor light cabin lights and all stuff like that and then you got like a little um a mechanical uh, voltage thing there so beneath my bed we've got two house batteries they are 85 amp hour um we're going to upgrade to bigger ones for next year because we have big plans. Um, in here, we've got some electricals and things. We've got a thousand watt inverter, which we don't use that much anymore because we've got an inverter. We've got, we've got a generator now. We just keep plastic bags in here and the extension lead and things like that, basically. Um, on the front of the side of the charts table, we got a cut, cut and lead drawer. Another cutlery drawer, and then just a brick and brack drawer. We keep all the journals and then open a few things in there basically. <clears throat> Going to the front again by the hatch, we've got a little pocket here. We keep locks in and temp the temperature sensor. So, in here, what Adam is opening up now. Ta -da, is our booker. D DV20. Um, it's two cylinder, 20 horsepower, and it's been incredibly reliable. I think it's about 1980 something. So it's quite an old engine, but it's they're just made to last. Beautiful engines, touch wood, they're reliable. Touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. This is the saloon on Atlas. It's a very tidy saloon. There's plenty of space here for two people, well, Luke and I, to live on board here. Uh, you've got a nice big table in the middle, which uh, folds up and folds down. Uh, this is this is my side. This is where I sit. I only sit this side, and Luke sits the other side. So up here, I've just got my cupboards here. One there, one there. It's all my personal stuff in there. And it's just a bit more storage up here. A bit more storage in here, just for bits and pieces. This is our electrical cupboard. Uh, it's just full of sockets and all sorts of things and in here it's just all my personal stuff and more personal stuff in there underneath here <clears throat> there's just storage it's just plenty of storage under here and uh yeah it's rammed full of tools this is all our tools spares it's got spares of everything on this boat loads of tools under there all sanding gear under here sandpaper for all sanding epoxy um, all sorts in there. Yeah, so this is this is Luke's side is where Luke sits here. Uh, again, underneath all these is just storage, just full of storage and things, power tools, these are electrical boxes, electrical boxes. It's just a lot of food, a lot of food in here. Yeah. Um, got nice storage up here for books, bits and pieces. Good thing about the rival, there's tons and tons of storage on here. So it's just a nice place to be in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is nice. We've got yeah. LED lights which we put in, one there and one there. Powerful LED lights. Yeah. We got two large sea berths here, which the seat comes down and these come out. It's like, um, demonstrate it. Yeah, Luke's gonna demonstrate. We've got one either side. One either side. <laughs> Up here, we've got a barometer and our clock, as well as the 
Lloyd's register of shipping for a rival 34. So coming forward, this is our heads. This is our sea toilet with pump. The pump water in and out and pump. Yeah, pump water in and out. And our sea cocks, one for the toilet and one for the sink. In here, there's a pull out sink in there with a, a water pump, which don't really get used that often much. Storage here for uh, yeah, all your toiletries and things like that. A nice little window here, lights at the top. Uh, some places to hang stuff up on here. And if I spin round and sit on the throne, there's more storage here, mainly for tins of food and things. Uh, this is where it all, this is like a, like a wet locker, which we use for uh, all our gear, life jackets, etc. There's a spare gas bottle down there. Just bits and pieces mainly up there, really. It's a nice little head, it's small, but it's compact and it's nice in here. So moving forward, out of the head, this is my private bedroom. <laughs> this is my bed. This is where I sleep. My blanket there, my bed there. So above my bed we got uh, storage shelves up there. A nice window. This is the hatch that leads out onto the foredeck. More storage up there. And here we keep... This is our remote control we made for the Anchor Windlass. We just put it in a like a hobby box. We wrap it in a bag to keep the salt water off it. Got a nice long cable on here. This goes out onto the deck to control the anchor windlass. Uh, yeah, the windlass, I don't know if you can see it, it bolts down through here. And this is the control electric box we put in for the windlass. The cables run down here and through aft of the boat. It's got storage, oh, as you can see. Just. Got a forward locker here. It's all our sails in here. There's a spare main sail, uh, a spare Genoa, and there's a large spinnaker in there and a smaller type spinnaker cruising chute in there. Um, Now underneath my bed is, is this where the anchor chain locker is. A very, very deep locker. Fits all our chain in there. We have um, 55 meters of eight mil chain. Fits in there, just lovely. And that's the pipe it goes down from the main deck down to there. Again, it's just storage, a lot of food. Tea bags for Luke, because he's, he's addicted to tea. There's more storage underneath there. And, Again, there's storage in here, underneath underneath there, and more storage underneath there. That's the boat tour then. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to leave us a like, give us a thumbs up, and please share. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. It means a lot, a lot to us. Yeah, thank you. See you in the next one. See you. Bye.